Hey, hey. What's up, everybody? How's it going, fish tank people? Everybody's good? Are we back here? Hey, hey. What's going on, fish tank people? Back in the mix, Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you with how to grow aquarium plants live. Hope everybody is doing well. I'm excited to be sitting here uh, in front of the 220, about to bring it to you all on my favorite topic, talking about how to grow aquarium plants, doing it live, YouTube style. I uh, hope you all are having a fabulous freaking day. I know I'm having a fabulous freaking day. I got the ShamWow mic on. Click the links around here. Once this video is done, you can check out this spoof on the ShamWow guy. It is fun to wear the mic, although it's actually not connected, um, as you can see, but it's still a great time. So today, I want to go in front of my 220-gallon aquarium. I also have, let me pick this up. I'll show you all real quick. I have these tanks over there. You can see and I'm going to talk about those as well. But we're going to start out in front of the Big Daddy from Cincinnati, my favorite aquarium, and probably a lot of yours with my tanks. That's the 220-gallon tank that I've got, and I've had set up for a real long time. So uh, I'm going to just quickly do a microphone check and make sure everybody is good with the audio. How's the audio here, folks? Let's see. With you guys checking in real quick with the chat. Make sure everybody's good here. What's up? Going, going. What's going on? How we doing? We good? Everybody good? All right, cool. Yes, I'll be at the Aquatic Experience. Christy, I'm good. We're going to roll over here real quick and uh, get something set up on this real quick. And I'm gonna, hey, oh, one second, everybody watching this. I will get this all set up here, and we will get this party started. So, yeah, I'm really pumped to be doing this and having it going on. So um, we got you there. Got you hooked up. Got a moderator hooked up. All right, so... Let's get into this. So, all right, so this is my 220 gallon planted aquarium. I've had this tank, I set this tank up originally in 2009, something like that, in the uh, early, something like that. Yeah, so it's 2017. So, yeah, it's been set up for about eight years. And I want to break this tank down head uh, from head to toe, actually, toe to head, if you will. We're going to start at the bottom, we're going to work our way up. I'm going to talk about um, the initial setup of it, I'm going to talk about the water in it. I'm going to talk about the lights on it, and then I'm going to go into uh, different types of plants that I have in the tank, and then kind of how those all work together. I also I do have a uh, special going on on my website. If you guys are on there, there's a little buy one, get one free on, you know, 20 species of plants. No big whoop. No big deal for you. But enough of all that. Let's get into this. Okay, so the 220-gallon aquarium, let me start by saying this. This 220 right here behind me was originally purchased for only 500 bucks. And when you think 500 bucks, you're like, oh, that's great. But this is the advice that I like to give a lot of people when they're first getting into their big tank, and that's this. When you buy a tank, and you say the tank is a great deal, it's not just the price of the tank, okay? This aquarium cost me $500. Tank stand, it didn't include any lights, it didn't include any filters, it didn't include any substrate, any fit, blah, 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 blah. None of the stuff that went along with it. Just this tank, just this stand, okay? The dollar per gallon sale is fabulous freaking marketing, in my humble opinion, because you buy a tank. I remember, like, I was victim of the dollar per gallon sale. I was, like, standing there with 10 gallon, like, this is, like... A five gallon was like 12 bucks more, and I had a 10 gallon. I was like, this is great. And then I was like, wait a minute, I need gravel. Wait a minute, I need a heater. Wait a minute, I need filter. You know, like, so just understand that. So, my first advice when you're going into getting any bigger aquarium is to understand, like, just because the initial aquarium you purchase is not that expensive does not mean that everything else going into it is not going to cost you some money. So, with that said, let's roll in here. The aquarium substrate here is the fundamental part of uh, aquariums that I think is the most overlooked part of your planted aquarium. I am running in this aquarium dirt. Now let's just back up a second here. I know this beautiful chick, beautiful mama, Mother Nature, right? What would Mother Nature do? So if you're out in Mother Nature and you go to the side of a riverbed or you go to the side of a lake or a stream or whatever, like where the plants grow, it's generally like muddy and dirty and gross, okay? It's also shallow water, but we're not going to talk about lights just yet. So you have to think like a plant, like, okay, these plants in here like need to eat, they need to imitate nature. So in nature, when you find a stream or a riverbed, you have um, some sort of nutrients at their roots. And I've said it a bajillion times, the plants can grow four to 400 times more nutrients through their roots than through their stems and leaves. So I decided to dirt this bad boy. Let me tell you out of the gate, there are other alternatives. You can use uh, pre-bought substrates. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of uh, pre-made substrates, whatever, that are okay, but they're still gonna make a mess when you get in there. So I'm a dirt guy. And the reason for that is simple. We want as much nutrients at the base where the plants eat as possible. Now, let's take this full circle, okay? This giant plant right here is a Crenum natans, okay? This tank, this plant has been growing with me for, 
I don't know, eight, nine years old. It's old. But it might even be a decade old, right? This this plant right here. Not quite a decade, but close. Okay, everyone's like, oh, man, I love that plant. Like, guess what? Like, that plant's not going to grow unless it's in a high nutrient-rich substrate, okay? So whether you like dirt or not or whether you're like, oh, I just want to grow my plants in plain gravel, if you want a good-looking aquarium because you want good-looking plants, you need to make it so the plants can eat in there, okay? Like, I, I'm growing and selling Amazon swords to hell. They're on special. Um, and I would grow them in dirt. Like, we put them in a tub, we'll grow them with dirt. So I think a lot of people miss this and just out of the gates, out of the stumbling blocks, just they, they stumble out of the blocks because they're not taking their time and really figuring out, like, okay, my plants need to eat. Now, not all plants need to eat, and we'll cover some of those in a second. But I really want to hit this home because plants eat at their roots four to 400 times more nutrients through their roots than through their stems and leaves. That varies between plants. But regardless, you get the idea. I'm going to check in with Chad over here, make sure everybody's doing good. going to give you the old... The old Mr. Hinkle, anybody lost? How's this going here? All right, everybody good here? We good? How we doing, chatters? We're good? Cool, got it. Thank you, Nisi, for dropping that on there. Cool, pretty, good, you got it? Just subscribe, you're cool, thanks. Don't have lights. All right, so we're going to get into here, so I'm going to keep rolling here. All right, so, again, plants absorb nutrients at the roots. Like, I have big plants. People are like, oh, D, you like this tank? And they may not like this tank, whatever. But, like, you can't deny the plant growth, right? Like, you can't deny it. Like, I got a four-foot-tall plant in there. Like, that's because it's got good nutrients at its roots. So, with that said, you're going to be saying, wow, when we get to the next part of this. But there are some plants in here, by the way, that do not require good nutrients or substrate. I'm just going to touch on some of those. We've got some Nubius in here. We've got some Bulbitis in here. Um, there's some Bucephalandra with some Aldrion over that way. And then this is some Anubius right here. There are also some Crips uh, in here. That's a giant barter eye you guys can see. So these are all, like, don't necessarily need that good of nutrients at the roots. They like nutrients at the roots, but they may not necessarily uh, need it. Okay, so we're going to move from the dirt, um, you know, pick a way to feed your plants to roots. Look, if you want to use root tabs, you want to use uh, osmocot. I use, clay. I tell people to use clay. Clay has an iron binding ability. It's like a dip. It's on a golf ball. Um, it pulls the Fe2, Fe3 down to the nutrients, where the down to the substrate, where the plants eat. So if you're not doing that, I mean, that's still the clay, but whatever. Like, yeah, figure out some way to feed your plants at the roots. Root tabs, eco-complete, eh. Um, but you know, figure out a way to feed your, feed your plants at the roots. It's going to be a better thing for you. We're going to go from the bottom. We're going to go to the middle. We're going to talk about the water. The water. Why the light change when I do that? See that? That's weird. Get in the shadows. So yeah, now we're going to talk about the water. I have 220 gallons of water behind me here. I'm six foot long. I'm stretching the whole length. Can't see it. I'm out of the frame. 30 inches tall. Okay, this is a lot of water. You need to know if you have good water. And when you do the, when you have water in your aquarium, you need to know kind of what you're trying is what you're trying to achieve going to work with that water. I did a video the other day. I uh, clicked links around for my top 10 fastest ways to kill fish. One of the ways that people kill fish is they buy uh, fish that don't go with their water. So out of the gate, like I know my water's running a little bit higher. I talked about this in the video. Click link around, check it out. But uh, basically, when you have more, uh, like if you have like really soft water or whatever, and then or really hard water, and you're trying to keep like a soft water fish, that's not gonna work. Like, I've never kept all some angels. I love angel fish. Like, I love them. Like, I've got one in there somewhere, like collected in Peru. He's bomb. But the ones that are really sweet, the altums that get about like a foot tall, they're really ridiculous. They come from a really soft pH. So I low pH, soft water. So I cannot keep those. Those are not for Dusty. Dusty does not get those fishes. I do not get those fishes because it's not good in my water. My water is hard. I've got the rocks. In the limestone country, those are like, this is this rocks collected, like, around here. They're like, like high calcium content, okay? So, those are out for me. Um, and those angels are out for me because I have harder water. Uh, rams, rams. You know how many rams I've killed? Four or five, at least, you know? German blue rams, love lower pH. You can get them to go higher, but we're gonna, like, generally speaking, like, they like a lower pH, softer water, okay? So, the, these are out. So, when you're working with your plant tank, you want to consider the water. Now, there's something else besides, like, the water with your fish. The water with your plants. Your plants are going to suck stuff out of the water. Okay? Your plants are going to eat. I know you don't believe me. You're not hearing me, but I'm telling it to you right to your face. I'm telling it to your face. I'm saying, listen, folks, your plants are going to eat. Like, for example, your Anubius. Your Anubius right here. This Anubius absorbs calcium and magnesium and all that good stuff out of the water. It likes a lot of iron, too. So it absorbs this stuff out of the water. So you've got this big tank. You have this. You have to think of it like... Think of like a like a glass of Kool-Aid or whatever. And like you got this like big giant, like you know, like the big fat like Kool-Aid dude. God, I wish I had that outfit or something right now. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the Kool-Aid man. You had like the Kool-Aid man, and like all of a sudden, like 
like the plants were in there and then they were just like sucking out all the terrible red stuff that's like horrible for you according to the FDA and like all the sugar and all you'd be left with is just like some crunk water they take all the sugar think of that like your plants like your plants are like sponges they're absorbing everything out of the water so what do you need to do what happens in nature mother nature comes down and she goes <laughs> and she splashes and she gets rain and it rains makes it rain on them hoes and it rains so what are we doing here what did we not do in here we did not do water changes for a long time this tank did not have water changes for a long time. This tank had algae really bad because Dusty did not do his work. I did not practice what I preached like a fool. So, yeah, you got to do your water changes. So you got your good substrate. You figure out how you do your good substrate. And you got to figure out how you can do water changes. You got to make it easy on yourself to do water changes. Do not, there is no substitute for good water change. Water change places. Now, there is something to be said about the water. I don't want to talk about this. I talked about the top 10 best ways to kill your fish video the other day. But that is this. You got to make sure you have dechlorinator, dechlorinator like removes chlorine um, when you use your water because I have killed fish, many a fish in this tank right here because I had uh, too much chlorine coming on water. In fact, the video I did yesterday, I'll link it up someday, uh, I talk about how you got to smell your water because if your water smells like bleach or chlorine or anything like that, your city is trying to kill your fish. They're trying to do you good because they're killing all that bacteria that would come in the water and you drink it and oh my God, be a third world country type situation. And they're trying to do you a favor. What they're really doing is they're adding too much chlorine or chloramines or whatever. So if you do not, um, you know, take into account the chlorine that goes into your water, you're going to be in big, big trouble. So that is another thing to consider when you're adding your water. The other thing, too, is this year, uh, last winter, we did not have a very hard freeze. My water in Lexington typically comes out with a higher pH and a high mineral content. I don't want to get too into, like, TDS and all that stuff. But basically, there's a lot more nutrients and stuff in the water. This year, there wasn't. So you got to make sure that your water comes out okay. People with well water, nine times out of ten, you're screwed. People that you have like the water softeners, you got to you got to know what's up with your water. And I don't want to get into everybody else's water scenarios. So uh, you got your substrate, you got your water. Let's talk about lighting, <laughs> like lightning flashes. Let's go. Okay, take a drink. Anybody learn anything here? Want to take a sip? Anybody? Anybody learn anything? You guys learning? What's up? How you doing? I'm going to do Q&A at the end. What's going on, everybody? You living good? Taking a drink. Got to hydrate. Talking about water. I can't even drink water. You know what that's like? You know what that does to a man? Mm. Okay. Talking about substrate. Talking about lighting. Right, talking about water. Talking about substrate. I'm going to talk about lighting. Okay, lighting. One time, I went to the doctor when I was on my way to Peru. And he checked out everything, and he told me, he goes, Dusty, he goes, when you go to Peru, you can't get in the water. And I said, Doctor, what do you mean I can't get in the water? Like, that's what I'm going there to do. Like, I'm going there to get in the water. He's like, oh, FD, FD, or uh, CDC says whatever. And while I was there, I was getting a bunch of tests. And one of the tests I found out is that I was vitamin D deficient. Even though my name is Dustin, I'm vitamin D deficient. I'll figure that out. So, I'm vitamin D deficient. What that means is that means I don't get enough sunlight in my life. I'm down in my basement right now talking about lighting, and I should be outside. But Josh is outside. He's unpacking a ridiculous import. I don't want to be anywhere near him. So I'm in here. But I'm vitamin D deficient. So I am a human, and I need sunlight. Okay? But I'm not a photosynthetic creature. These are photosynthetic creatures behind me here, folks. These things need light to make glucose, to make energy for them. Yet everyone buys a crappy aquarium hood, and they're like, I'm going to grow plants under this one single crap light. Okay? Lighting. You want as much light as possible available. You don't necessarily need to use it all, but you need to have as much light available as possible because you can always ramp it up. I got these things I can't I can't show you over here. I got this thing. It's called timer. So you can like always like throttle it up. Like my lights are only on I don't know five six hours a day. Okay, so it's <coughs> caught in the mic. It's not working. Um, so you want as much light available as possible. All right, I want to just uh, show, I've got on here, I've got uh, one of my blasters, a couple of uh, fluorescents, i got all kinds of stuff uh, over in the tanks, over there, i got some halide action going on, i got a halide, so i got one tank that's like ridiculous light, and i got a tank that's not, but I want as much light as possible, okay, get y'all back down here, get you close, so you want as much light as possible available to your tank, you can always throw it back, but it's way harder to get the, uh, it's way harder to add light, it's way harder to like add more light later than it is to just have it out of the gate, right? So you're better off just like going blammo with your lights, getting good lights, 
trying to get this set up so you don't have to see that window behind me. That's bright light too. So you want to make sure you're set up so that you can have good lighting available to your plants. Like one single pressure strip's not going to do it. There's all kinds of LEDs available. Kids are home. Things are about to get weird. But um, try to cover up the stuff in the back, whatever. And so, yeah, you want ridiculous amount of lighting. Now, look, um, with lighting, it's like this. Have as much of it available. If you're buying, um, you want, I don't have the graph in front of me, but basically if you're buying lights, you want the peaks on the rainbow to be in the red and in the blue section. That's the spectral composition without graphs and diagrams. You'll have to catch me on a webinar. I'll talk about that more in detail. But basically, um, you want what plants see and what just look, because it looks bright to you necessarily, necessarily mean it's looks bright to humans. If you're looking at the light bulb, you want the light bulbs to be reddish color, like a pink hue. That's ideal. Um, LEDs, particularly, you want that. You don't want the blue as much. You don't want the green as much. You want more of the, the blues and the reds. I'm simplifying something that I don't have a graph with. Uh, another thing about lighting is this. Lighting gets grass drastically reduced the deeper you go. It's called the inverse squared law. I'm 30 inches deep right here, folks. Okay? Lighting this tank is not the same as lighting the Lion King tank that's over there, right? It's not the same because... The light cannot penetrate down that far. You ever go out in the middle of the lake? There's not a whole lot of plants out in the very, very middle of the lake because it's deep. But if you go to the shore, go ahead, you go to the lake here, you go yourself foot in bay or whatever. Party your brains out. You go up there. You go in the in the, uh, in the basin, the marina they got. They got all kinds of LOD. They got all kinds of jungle. They got all those plants. Why? Because it's shallow water and the light can penetrate. But you exponentially lose light the deeper you go. I get asked all the time, Tosin, I want to have a coffin in my tank. I got a 90 gallon aquarium and I got one light bulb on it. Well, guess what? That's not going to grow plants very well because the light's not going to be able to penetrate all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so you need to have good lights. I'm running halides over there. I got my own line of LEDs, whatever. We can talk about that another day. Um, but yeah, so you got to have good lighting. So you got to have all things in place too. You got to have the nutrients available at the substrate, you got to have nutrients available in the water. You think of it like a cake. You got like your ingredients, all the ingredients in the cake, and then the light, light bakes the cake. Light puts it all together. So that is the very basics. I do have some plants. I want to just make sure everybody's got that there. I got a whole bunch of plants right here to show you, bringing it to you. Lots of these to buy one, get one free on my site. Say I was on the YouTube live stream and get a free plant. Get a free plant. You're going to be saying, wow, when I show you with this microphone. So uh, I'm going to go to that to the chat here, make sure everybody's behaving themselves. Everybody acting all right over here? Moderators, y'all doing good? Why is it not going over there? Here we go. Anybody learn anything? We got one. We doing all right? We doing good? What's uh? What's going on? Everybody learn anything? Dude, Dirty D, good. How do you feel about banana dosing? Cool. Oh God, all right. I uh, don't have it. That's not on sale, Nisi. Calmostratum is not on sale. Only the plants in that one collection. No. It's marked down. It's not buy one, get one, though. But thank you for linking all that stuff up, everybody. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Cool, good. Vodka dosing. What? Wow. Everyone remember to like and share. Yeah, if you did enjoy it, if you are enjoying this, please like it. Thank you for that. And hit the notifications button. I'm doing this more. I'm just catching my breath real quick here. I got more gas in the tank, believe it or not. Okay. Hang with me. Stick with me. Okay, everybody. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. I got to check on y'all. Man. At high energy, 18 minutes. Whew. Feel like a running back. All right. I'm gonna take a pause. Take a little zen break. Close your eyes. Breathe in the healing energy of the universe. Exhale everything you don't need. There we go. It's all that too. Children are back home from school. Exhale. Hope the wife takes them outside. Don't hear the children upstairs. Going to continue talking about equipment. Is everybody with me? I wish this microphone was working. It'd be a lot of fun, but it's not. But that's okay. So we've talked about the substrate, and we've talked about the water, and we've talked about the light. Now it's time to talk about the plants. You want to talk about the plants? Let me tell you how I got into plants first and foremost. Look pretty masculine drinking out of straw, don't you? So back in the day, um, when I was in college, I, uh, I got my first, it was a 40 tall, 37 if you want to be a nerd about it. And uh, what I did is I had two strips of lights on there, because remember, tall tanks, you got to light them hard. So I had two fluorescent strips that fit the old plastic chintzos or whatever, fluorescent, fluorescence T5s. 
by the way, on T5s, T8s, and all that, like the bigger the number, the bigger the diameter, the smaller the number. So like T5 is smaller, T8s are bigger and all that. T10s, you get the idea. And I had a 40 gallon. And what I realized is that the fish tank gods love me because outside of my room, I had a, a random mud sink. A mud sink, you know, just like a sink you do whatever in, dirty stuff in. And uh, so I was able to do water changes all the time. So I learned the valuable lesson of water changes. This is, by the way, in the pre-dirt era. So I was growing uh, Liliopsis, which I don't have any around here. Uh, I was growing some Rotella, like this right here. And I was growing, uh, I was growing uh, just basic beginner plants. And what I learned is that if you behave and you do it right, um, you can have like way more, like you can almost turbocharge a plant tank if you want to. And this was no CO2 or nothing, but I just really learned like get everything dialed in right, uh, you're golden. So that was the part for me that really got me excited because I had it like, I had it rolling and I was like, okay, like I got this. And all of a sudden I started getting like really, really bonkers growth. Now, I did the water change. I did the work actually uh, Athens, Ohio, Ohio University, not Ohio State, had uh, fortunately had really, really good water. So I was growing a lot of plants and I was doing a, a real good job of it. But um, I'm going to break into plants. Uh, about 80% of these will buy one, get one free on my site. You guys can check that out. Say you're on the YouTube live streaming, I'll throw you a free one as well. It's hard to me, not yours. You still get buy one, get one free. Um, I will I will have a caveat with this. Some of these have been growing above water, and we're going to talk about the differences right now. So people get their lights. They typically get out of the starting gate wrong because they don't have good substrate. But they have good substrate. Uh, they have good water and have good lights. They're like, but man, why is everything happening? Well, plants, just like humans, need time to adjust. They need time to adjust. They need time to evolve into what they are. Children upstairs, can you hear them? So I'm going to grab some. Check it out. Grab the old rag right now. Okay, so out of the gate, I want to talk about one of my favorite plants. This is actually the first species Sunday I ever did. And that is dwarf Sagittaria right here. And this plant right here comes in all by beginner plant at combos for a reason. This is dwarf Sag. And I got two varieties here to show you. This is the regular, this is regular dwarf Sag right here. And this right here has been grown underwater. This right here is dwarf Sag. This has been grown above water. You can see because it's got a little bit of a flower. So it's flowered above water. Not a big deal with dwarf sag. Now this is a low uh, foreground plant. It only gets about that tall. Um, I mean, it comes in all my beginner planted combos. And uh, you put it in the front or front of your aquarium. And it grows like crazy. Uh, sends off runners. Goes like, doop, 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 doop. But this plant needs two weeks. Okay? It needs two weeks. It needs time. Think about it. You're like a kid. You go to a new school. Like, ain't nobody talking to you for the first two weeks. Right? I don't know you. You got nothing. You're not fitting in. You know, you got a new kid sitting in the back, picking your nose. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like one day, two weeks from later, uh, you know, a guy comes up to you and the playground. It's like, hey, man, you want to play ball? And then you got a friend and you're good. And you're back into school. Same thing with plants. They go into your tank and they hate it. And they're like, oh, man, I don't know. I'm not adjusted. Because plants need time to adjust. And look at the leaves on your trees right now. It's October. They're sure transition. Everybody, they've sucked all the nutrients out of the leaves into the body. And they're like, ah, oh, winter's coming. We're hiding. So plants take time to adjust. Uh, everybody seems to, to miss that for some reason. So you want to get plants, ideally, that are already kind of on the way to adjusting for you. And this would be some dwarf sag. This would be one of the ways to, uh, well, this one, this is growing our water, so this is already on its way. And then what you want to look for, nobody ever looks. If you just look, the plant's going to tell you how it's doing. You want to look, and you want to look at the very, very center right here of the plant. You can see this tiny little, oh, you're not going to be able to see, how are you going to be able to see that? You know how many keyboards I've ruined holding wet plants over them? There's a tiny little bit of growth right here in the center that's coming up out of here. You can peel it out. Here. That little tiny bit. That little guy right there. Come on, Logitech. That little thing right there coming out the center is all you got to know. Okay? When you see that, the plant has said, I am happy here and I'm giving you new growth based on the water conditions that you're currently providing me. And it's going to say, Thank you, because it's going to continue to grow. So do not give up on your aquarium plants until you see that tiny little bit of growth in the center. I think that's important. I think a lot of people miss that. Once you see that, you're golden. This is dwarf sedge. I've got some other examples. So I'm going to say dwarf sedge over here. We're talking about the tail of uh, tail of two plants. I've got two different varieties of swords to show you. 
Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't find your sword. Here we go. Nope. Oh, yeah, right here. Okay, so speaking of above water and below water growth, um, we have small, exotic, small exotic Amazon swords on sale. These have been grown by my pet lion named Josh. Josh is the man. These have been grown underwater. These. All right, so look. So this is a tail of two, two plants. This is an underwater sword. This is another underwater growth sword. I'll show you this right here. So these plants, so like when you when the Johnny beginner is looking, they're like, okay. They're like, you see two plants, and you're like, I like this plant. It's a deep purple Mercatus sword, by the way. It's pretty baller. Look at the roots on that. No joke. And then this one right here has been fully grown above water. Now look at this. Now when the, on the initial like run, you're like, oh, I like the looks of that one more. I mean, who wouldn't, right? It's got like six grows or whatever. The reality of it is, this plant, if I had to pick between the two, I'm rolling with this one because it's got underwater growth. You can see the new growth coming out the center here is underwater. And where the plant eats, it's big roots. I'm trying to show you guys the roots. Its roots are bigger. So this is actually, a, if I had to pick between the two, I'm taking this sword because this sword, unlike this, this sword will actually keep its leaves. This one won't. So this, this plant is actually like two weeks away. Now, if you want above water growth, we got you. But um, this sword is actually not quite as ready to go into your aquarium. So I think everybody needs to really understand that because plants take time to evolve. And um, these purple Mercatus swords are small exotic swords if you look at them up. And uh, that's the other one there. So there's a difference between the two plants there. Check in with you here. Everybody good? Cool, we're good. Everybody learning? Anybody learn anything right now? I'm in school right now. You are in school. You're in school with Dusty. Dusty wanted to be a teacher. Cool. You learning it? Cool, we're learning? Good. All right, so we're going to keep rolling. Uh, we got the swords taken care of. Now we're going to show you one of my favorite plants. We're going to show you two different varieties of it. I'm going to show you water wisteria. This is water wisteria. This plant, now this is a different example because every species is different, but I'm going to show you this thing. All right. Some of my competitors might sell plants that look like this. This is above water, water wisteria growth. See how the leaves are big and round and like they got the edges on them, they're just round, they're round leaves or whatever. They're round leaves, round leaves are doing you no good. Um, this is growing above water. This will have to go through that transition. It's actually one of the fastest transitioning plants. But then this is the exact same plant grown right here. I'll pull it out for you. Exact same plant grown above water. Or excuse me, below water. Above water growth, below water growth. Okay? Don't ask me why it's more frilly underwater. I know it looks better, but this is the water wisteria. This is actually one of the BOGOs as well. And this is a fantastic plant grown underwater. So a lot of fun. So this plant, like I won't sell this plant. Like I'll sit on this plant for like a couple weeks and it'll turn into this. It'll look like this eventually. But uh, this is underwater wisteria, underwater growth. This, by the way, is one of the ultimate beginner plants. Like super easy, like doesn't care. I've maybe one of the fastest growing plants I know. Um, we sell a ridiculous amount of it. And it is actually on sale right now. Uh, supplies are pretty limited, though. And, um, yeah, this is a fast grower, but underwater growth. Now, if you have, like, nutrient problems, if you have, like, extra nitrates or nitrogen or something like that, and you want to uh, remove it quickly, this would be the plant. What you would want to do is float it so it could be at the surface. A whole other conversation, but uh, you'd float it so that the surface would actually absorb all excess nutrients um, because it has more readily available CO2 above the water line. So something to consider. That. But, again, the difference. This plant needs transition time. This is the new kid at the first day at school eating lunch by himself. This is the kid with all the friends at the sleepover. See the difference? Everybody with me? Okay, good. We never moved. My kids never have to be a new kid. I never moved on up. It's nice. Um, I got another one for you. This is a, uh, a pretty cool beginner one. This is a red Mirio right here. Red Mirio phylum. This is also on sale. Now, this plant right here, red Mirio. This likes a little bit more water flow because of its frilliness. And uh, this was actually grown below water, which is kind of nice. And it's nice and spread out, but it uh, gives you a nice contrast there. Mirio, foxtail, if you will. 
uh, stuff we're selling is looking pretty pretty darn close to this. So, yeah, uh, a fun, easy one. I don't have an above water growth of it, though, so I'm going to set it aside here. I'm trying to find other ones. Ah, here's one. This is one of my uh, favorite ones right here. This is Rotella Indica. This has been um, put, this is, this is on special, too. Now, this was put under water two weeks ago. Now, the problem is, is that it's got this growth right here that's been grown under water, but then underneath here it hasn't been. Okay, so you can see this. This is above water growth. This is below water growth. So it starts and it kind of converts. To it's a weird one like that. It converts at the top and then comes down. So these tips right here are good. And then this right here will just kind of fit her off. But it's got good roots or whatever. So what I would do is I would actually cut this bottom stuff off. Because it's not doing you any good if you know what I'm saying. And you just cut that off right there. And uh, you'll be golden on the bottom. So hope everybody sees that right there. That's uh, above water growth. Uh, this is another one. I want to show the Estella Stellata right here. All right, so this is one. I put this in. This is the plant that I put in the uh, the no maintenance tank the other day. This is all right. This is the one. This is this is the new just got in. This is one month of growth uh, in in uh, one of my highlight tanks, and this is full underwater growth, um, purplish little tips on it. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see the purple on there. A lot of fun going on there. So uh, this is Estella Stellata. I might be, I might have that. Uh, I might be missing a letter or two in there. But see a little purple in there. Can I see that purple in there? So under now this is different because this plant under high, high, high light and high nutrients gets a purple like pow, like passion purple punch you in the face type uh, purple, which is fantastic. So I do uh, I do recommend that. Uh, I said it's actually a pretty easy beginner plant, and then I've got another one in here to show you. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is a uh, a pennywort right here, hydrocotyl. I forget which one it is, but this one can grow above or below. It's actually native to uh, parts of the U.S. right here. But uh, penny has obviously got the circles. Now, anytime this is a general thing here, but anytime you see plants that have this uh, like growth like this, where they is like where I got pulled a rag like over the uh, keyboard so I don't ruin Mr. Computer. Anytime you see a plant with like roots like this, you're going to have uh, you're going to have success generally speaking because it's just a hardier plant like Ligwigia does this. So anytime you see a plant with like a little like off little runner root type things, that's a good way to go. So when you see that, you know you're heading in the right direction for sure. So definitely check that out. Um, that's a nice one. And then I've got another one here. Um, this is a cousin to the I should have, I did this out of order so I apologize here. But you can kind of see the similarities. This is a, another form of hygrophila. This is hygrophila cordata red. It's that plant in the back, very back 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 right there. Hygrophila cordata red, and this is hygrophila. So you can see the, uh, the similar structure of the plant, like the actual like stem and stuff. And so these are cousins, right? Hygrophila deformis, hygrophila cordata red. Um, this is a wicked plan, man. This is like, I roll the dice and it's just coming in, just banging. So, uh, gives you red. Now here's the deal with red. You're going to want to increase your iron levels a little bit with the red. That's going to be an important thing to do. Um, this has been grown underwater. So this is good to go. Hygrophila cordata red. Uh, definitely check it out. This is actually, I think this is on, this is a limited supply. These are a buy one, get one free. I'm going to get them out to the folks. So this is a really, really wicked plant. Easy plant too. Now, this plant, if you want it to stay this red, you have to give it a little bit more nutrients. So like I grow up with the form of session, it's going to be green is what it is. Um, this, you want it to stay a little bit of this color, it'll get more of an olive color, a little less red uh, underneath. If without good lighting, it'll get a little more olive, but still, it's still a wicked contrast plant too. So Hygrophila cordata red. And I got uh, a couple more in here. This is a, uh, I got two red plants and then I'm going to go to Q&A. I got, uh, this is two plants that are not the same, but they're similar. I'll show them. I've got uh, the Widia Rippins right here. And this is actually a native plant, too. I saw this growing uh, in a creek not too far away. This is the Widia Rippins. This is on special, too. And then I've got Telanthera cardinalis. Okay, so both cardinalis red, cardinal red, got it. Um, and in this plant, I want to show this with the Widia. It also has the little, you know, it's an easier plant because it's got the little roots up the sides here. Everybody can see that? It's got the little roots up the side, so you know you got an easy plant in your hands. Um, I would just take it and plant this down there 
but the reddish tips under lower light, it's going to be a little bit more pale green. Now, the Telanthera, um, not related. Telanthera, as Oliver not says. Um, yeah, this is a, a nice red plant. And I got this is, and it's on sale too. So click the links around. Thanks everybody for linking that up. Uh, say you're on the uh, live stream and we'll throw you an extra plant. You got to say that though in the comments. You say, hey, throw me an extra plant. And uh, there you go. So alternate there is a red one. Nice alternative to Rotella. Um, and then it's got the, if you can look close, it's got a really, really ridiculous, like the, the tips are really red and nice. So everybody can see that. So that's pretty much it. I got the swords. I got those. Uh, I got a Mania Gracialis. This is not a beginner plant, but it's just a cool one. And I got another crypt to show you. Um, this is this is a Mania Gracialis. This is like a little higher calcium kind, a little more advanced. It's like 11, number four. The scale of one to ten is like a four. It's not such a beginner plant, but definitely a nice one. But again, it's also got the little side growths on the root, so it will it will heal quick for you. And then I got to show a difference in a crypt too. I've got two crypts in here. Tail of two crypts. Uh, one right here. All right, so I've got two crypts. This is the exact same plant. This one's growing above water. Uh, Ponde, crypt Pondifolia, I believe. P O N D E F O L A, I think it is. Just type in crypt in the search bar. But this is one grown fully above water. You can tell by the leaves. Very healthy plant. Um, grown above water. And then here's one that we've transitioned underwater. So all these big leaves that you think look so great are gone because they're not used to being living underwater. And then we've got the new growth underneath there, which is a hard transition to do, but you can see the new growth. And that's all you got to look for is that. So with crypts, it's called crypt mel that happens. Crypt, can a white dude do crypt? Um, that will happen. It happens. But look, like this plant is super healthy. Now the nice thing about this plant is it's got the good roots here. So I wanted to show the difference between above water growth. Crypts will have the melt for you. So yeah, now I'm going to go to uh, Q&A for a little bit. And then I'm going to hang out with some fan. One second, let me, let, me, let me wipe my hands off here. A little rag. Anybody learn anything? Can I get a like or a share if you're enjoying this? Maybe you'll, maybe you'll share. If you care, you'll share. I don't know. That'd be fun. Warm. All right, there we go. All right. To the Q&A. Let's see here. All right. All right. What's going on? Q and A. All right. What's going on? Q and A. How we doing here? All right, let me get this going here. One second here. Whoops. All right, Dustin's green from Denmark. Thoughts on Osmocot? Never done it. Uh, what's the best plans for high tech planet tank? Oh, that's easy. You want to do uh. Let's see here. High tech planet tank. I mean, what do you want? Really? High tech planet tank, do whatever you want to do. Plants to hide frying. You want to use Java moss. Uh, Wisteria would be a good one. Wisteria would be a real good one. Who else? What other questions y'all got? Uh, it's freezing up on me. Best way to get rid of algae? Hair algae. Oh, increase water flow for sure. Increase water flow. That's the biggest way to do it. Faded color in leaves. Uh, and mineral content. Increase mineral content. Oh, my thing is dying. How do I fix it? Uh, have you tried using moss wall and no maintenance tank? No, but I like that idea. Liam, good call. Um, I'm thinking waiting fully plant a tank. Cool. Brown tips on corkscrew means attack it. Would it be easiest playing silica sand? Ah, uh, you're gonna get. Oh, I'm getting out of control with the tats here. I uh, want to take top notch. We're gonna plant uh, up a notch. Uh, what are you looking for there? Evergrown, uh, Junstica, Americana, no. Epsom salt, snail safe. Uh, I wouldn't use lots of salt. Salt, snails and salt, not too much. Good moss doesn't get into the filter. They're clogged up. 
Wow, I'm going to have trouble keeping up with this here. Um, do you run any sumps? No. Uh, good moss doesn't clog the filter. It's tough. you got to put some sort of thing over the top of it. Uh, greetings from Germany. Guten Tag. Mishmar and Leipzig's Monats. Slap chop your stems back. <laughs> How often do you do a water change in the shrimp only tank? Uh, I would do little water changes on there. How are the sick fish doing? Um, sick fish are good, actually. They're eating. Dusty, what's the best gravel for a plant tank? I like dirt. BB gun size BB gravel on top of it. Hello. Uh, let's see here. What else? My chat's getting a little slow here. Last box. What's going on? Everybody good? What else? Uh, Talladega, Alabama. What's going on? Cool. Any tips on growing uh, Alpwich algae hillstream setup? Oh, I would run, uh, I don't know what that is actually with the Alpwich algae. I'm not sure what that is. What's going on? Wet fur to dry. It depends on what you're trying to do, man. What mic are you using? It doesn't matter. It's the, I'm using the mic on the, uh, on the, on the computer actually. Um, <clears throat> What's going on, yo? Having some streaming this year. I'm wondering if my plants need ferts when the leaves are pale and colored. Uh, roots, nah, dry protected roots won't work because uh, they're, they're liquid. They're liquid soluble, so it doesn't matter. I mean, you can, but uh, people use Osmocot too. I'm not really a big fan of it, but some people like it. I actually ripped out the no maintenance tank because I had Osmocot. Any advice on getting a tankless water heater? Yeah, uh, Stable Eltron makes a heck of a tankless water heater. I've been using mine for two years now. Um, you want to get a, you want to, you, they're going to pull a lot of uh, heat, so, or excuse me, a lot of electricity, so know that going in. Uh, I want to start real plants, but I'm afraid Africans might mess with them. You want to use wire and uh, rip the wire out, or excuse me, rip the wire out. Use uh, wire, we throw it in too, by the way. Um, use wire and uh, tighten it down on there. That's the best way to roll. What do you think, do you think even complete is number one? Oh, I think even complete is number like three or four. I take I take the Fluval Stratum, the Brightwell. I take the uh, Amazona. So I take all those over even complete all day long. Favorite planted tank? Uh, Crenum Matan is probably my best one there. What kind of fertilizer do you use? Do I use UV sterilizers? No, I don't use UV sterilizers. Please help pale leaves, new growth. What do I need? Iron. You don't want to chase Elemish, um, but uh, Andrea, uh, I would I would do the big water changes. You're missing something. You got to figure out what it is. But I wouldn't chase just iron. Can you use Eagle Complete with dirt? Uh, you can use Eagle Complete with dirt, yeah, but I would I would only use just a little bit of it. So, yeah, I would only use a little bit. I don't like it actually because it it settles poorly, like it settles like not well. So I, I would rather see you use a gravel over that. How can we sure dosing right amount? Love the tank, man. Thanks. Um, do physicians grow direct in the uh, gravel? Uh, yeah, it will. Do I ship to Canada? No, I don't. Sorry. I don't. There's a whole board issues things. Yo, what's going on? Steve Meyer, what's up, man? Dirty tanks, heavy diatoms out of control. Oh, I didn't show the Bacopa yellow flame. Steve Meyer, how you living, man? Boom. I didn't show the Bacopa yellow flame. This is on sale, too. This is ridiculous. What's going on? Dirty tanks, diatoms out of control. Inhibit plant growth. You got to let the diatoms roll. So you got to let the diatoms just kind of like do their own thing. And um and like and cycle through, if you will. Like you gotta just let them cycle through, which is hard. And if you have silica that tends to increase diatoms, people say uh, algae eaters or uh, blah, 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 blah. people say auto cyclists work with diatoms, you just gotta let them roll. Uh I got a top fine aquatic gravel over over baked clay balls, they float how long before they don't float? Oh, I don't know about that, James. That's tough. Those balls are meant to float, so that's a tough situation. How much how can I dose too much fertilizer? Yes, you can if you have uh, if you have like um, invertebrates, you can for sure. Going out, sorry. Best plant silica combo. Thank you. Living good, man. Glad to catch you on this. Cool for sure. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is good. What y'all got? Feeling good. That's like my my internet's kind of spotty. Sorry. Does driftwood release nutrients to the water column? Uh, it might, it depends on the driftwood. I wouldn't say really nutrients. Something might be coming out your driftwood. I mean, it's wood, think about it. So it's releasing something. So that could make sense for sure. Picking up parts of plants off of there. What y'all want to know? Uh, let's see here.
Yo, D, Tiger loose ball at the end of the day. How long should I wait for taking the sprout? Oh, that's a tough question, man. Depends on the tank. Depends on the situation. Need a giant ShamWild drain behind me? I do. What's your answer? What's uh, the what clay are you talking about early? Uh, I use uh, a red potter's clay. I sell it, but you can get it elsewhere. Um, and I use one pound per 20 gallons or so. Seems to be the best way to go. Best, uh, what would be the best? So what would be best? Are they good for plants? Uh, Janet, I would use, she's talking about, Janet's talking about, she's using these like, uh, they're made for hydroponics. I would use, gra I would use like a miracle Grow organic choice dirt or something with like out my, no, my, no moisture absorb. Can I talk? I talk? Um, or something like that. And uh, I would make sure that it's like a uh, no moisture absorb, no, uh, no like potting mix or anything like that. And then I would cover that in uh, gravel, like little gravel. Super glue works. What Kelvin lights are good if you don't rock plants? I mean, 6,500, 10,000, whatever looks good to you. If you're not concerned about plants, buy whatever lights look good to you visually because your light see, your eyes see is different than what uh, plants see. Cool. Uh, thoughts on no heater, no flow, no tech tank? I don't know. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, you could try it. I would do really fast growing plants. Um, let's see here. Your text is awesome. Thanks. When are you going to show us your green room, Dusty? If I had a green room, I'd make better videos. Not really because I hate editing them. Super glue. Uh, fish are dead. What would be caused it? Neglect, probably. Famous Jones. That's super glue. Easiest way to work with. Cool. Um, yeah. Is this audio? Everybody's still coming in all right? I have some, I'm having some issues with the distractible stream. Yeah? I'm all right. I got to get my can't Look at my, make sure my stuff's here. Hang on. There we go. Uh, Famous Jones, what's going on? What else you got, folks? Rubber bands. What kind of cichlids work well permanently in a 55 gallon of hard water? Oh, name your name your cichlid, really. Cichlid, a lot with the exception of South American cichlids, African cichlids love that. Uh, any tank tours coming anytime soon? Uh, stream is fine and no quality issues or breaks at all. Cool, good. You get nervous. How to do the buy one get one comments discount section? No, you got to go. There's there's only a uh, good question. There's 20 species of plants that are buy one get one free uh, on my site. Those species only, um, and it's uh, linked up. Someone's del someone's leading people there. I don't know. Thank you, psychedelic babe, for whatever you're doing. Uh, girls use the hair ties down for plants. Sure. There is a. Uh, it's just the. It's just a specific section. It's you can't miss it. There's a pop up. It's those 20 species. Uh, you have me set up a lot of 125s. Cool. Thank you. Nisi's linking it up. Thank you, Nisi. Plants that do well in soft water. Tonina vellum does well in soft water. Plants can adjust to soft water. It's just a shock point because most people have uh, water that's above uh, pH of 7. So to go below that, that's considered soft. Um, a J, uh, it's considered soft. Nisi, thanks for linking up the buy one, get one free. Now, supplies are limited on that too, folks. I live in New York City. Do you know how many good stores to get plants and fish? I hear that um oh what is the name of that store monster i hear is good i hear monster is good uh i know some dudes there's a guy named christian that used to work i forget where he worked um but there's there are some good shops in new york so manhattan aquarium is a good one right here i never actually been to it though so hope that helps use super glue to attach my java fern and java moss but it has a white film by the way the christmas moss i have right now is insane Um, white, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't answer the question. Uh, super glue attached to my java fern as white java moss and white film when I put it in the tank. Yeah, that's because it, uh, it does something to it, like when it attaches. I've heard that's a problem. I would use this wire on that famous Jones. Fantastic name. Super juggler. What's my favorite cichlid? It's an angelfish right over there. Right over there. So I'm going to move you guys around a little bit. I'm going to show you uh, the. Actually, I'm, I'm too good situated here. So I don't not, I do not ship to Canada, unfortunately at this time I do not. Sorry folks, no Canada. So yeah. Every jungle vile dwarf shad doesn't seem producing. I use for too many ideas. Alright, Eric, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that the jungle vile not producing and the sad not producing. You dose some fertilizers. Uh, you're probably I, I would say, well first if you're do dosing, my first thing would be like how long have you had the plants, right? Because if you haven't had them that long, they might just be getting settled, because it does take time. 
Second thing I would be like, if you're dosing fertilizers, you're probably missing some element. Like you can't, like I can't just eat all vegetables. I have to have some protein. I'm a veggie eater, but you can't have like all vegetables or all one type of nutrient. So you're probably missing some sort of a trace element. I don't know what that is. Um, and you may not be getting it from your water column, apparently, if something's going on, but I would give it time. Uh, Jungle Val likes a hard hack. Likes a real hard hack. You still have only one angelfish. I actually have two angelfish. Um, I have two angelfish. Uh, one is in here and one is in the greenhouse because this one has got too big and he's beating everybody up. Uh, watch long term plans. Dusty, what are your long term plans with the tank in the background? Keeping a community? I actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually hate that it is a uh, community, like, oh, well, it's a community tank, but I wish it was all of, like, one species. Like, it's killing me that it's, like, uh, this is Dustin's Ark, right? Like, Dustin's Ark. And I'm not nuts about the uh, the Ark effect, but it is what it is. So I've got the, the Ark effect going on. Who built the Ark? Dustin, Dustin. You ever heard that church song, right? Um, so I've got, I don't know, I'd like to get it down to like one big school of something. I really think that would be the ideal way to go, but, uh, it just hasn't gone that way. And these fish need to come out of the greenhouse. So, uh, thank you for asking that, Liam. Dirty tank, guppy grass, Java moss, goes great. Jungle Val dies. Any ideas? Um, might be some plant wars going on there. It's called aliopathy or whatever. Could be. Any tips on angelfish breeding? Yeah. Um. Angelfish breeding, you want to give them a nice environment. They're going to breed once, and then they're going to eat everything. That's what angelfish do. Uh, did I say that in the video the other day? No, I haven't yet. I'm losing my mind. Um, but, yeah, so they're going to eat everything, and they're going to try again. So eat, and then they're going to try again. So you want to give them time, and you want to give them a good slate. And that, that, They breed bread best for me when I had, like, wisteria around. Like, I had lots of wisteria. They seemed to like Kind of, well, a lot of fish like this, actually. Like, when you have fish, they need, like, a lot of, like, hiding spaces, like, hiding areas or whatever. So, um, like, like they, they like, like humans, like, they like to be, like, more secluded and, like, more chilled out and, like, a more, like, like, like not see each other. So, I like to keep wisteria. My little 125 had wisteria here and wisteria there. And I had breeding sets of angels on either side. Chrissy's asking, you ever thought about keeping your freshwater gobies? I haven't, no. Another Alaskan in the house. Iron or cherry shrimp harmful. I wouldn't go too crazy. I've never dosed too heavy with. I, I dosed potassium one time and killed a bunch of cherries. Uh, invertebrates are tough with dosing. Um, doing a native. Oh, how how low of temps can plant? Depends on the species. Uh, keep it in 60. Doing native Denmark tank with spine backs. Hit 40 to 10 degrees Celsius. Cold is option for plants surviving that. Uh, oh, Elodia and Acris probably illegal though in Denmark. Um, Jungle Vile can do that. Sag can do that. Wisteria can do that. You're running a tough one there, though. Um, let's see here. It took me eight rounds to get successful batch. There you go. Okay, you got eight rounds to get successful batch of uh, angelfish. Does charcoal affect plant aquarium? I believe it removes nutrients, but I am not the expert on that. Like, um, that's not my that's not my thing. I don't test enough elements at this time to know that. Um, what's my favorite schooling fish? Ooh. That's a toss up between neons. I like neons. I like, I actually, this goes back to what I was talking about with the water column. I actually like, uh, rummy nose probably are my favorites. Like I love rummy nose. Like they got like a low, they got low schooler. So imagine like if I had this tank and I had a low school of rummy nose, just like cruising along the bottom there, like just room, just all along the bottom. Like that would be so wicked. But, uh, unfortunately I run like higher pH, uh, in a higher pH, so it's just hard for me to do. So I can't outrun them like that. I don't run them like that. So then I would go with neons. It's also why I don't keep cardinals. These, by the way, are Peruvian uh, bloodfin tetras that I collected myself. Now, the problem is I got these in, and uh, I brought in, like, 15 of them, and then they were at a coffee shop, and they, they didn't take care of them. They kept jumping out. They never get a lid. So now I've got, like, two, but I can't get rid of fish that I got in Peru. So I'm just, like, hanging out, like, hoping that they, uh, I don't know, hoping that they do all right. I'm scowling, sorry. Let's see here. Any rum rum are great. Would you ever get a school of angels? I'd consider a school of angels, sure. Uh, I have a few large plants I got from here. They're barely tall. Water change cracks. What oh. When I do a water change, the stems crack. Any ideas or advice? Yeah, so that's why I don't stock water with uh, water sprite. Because water with sprite has like um like the stems get too too tall and kind of like break, 
So, you know, you're just going to go go lighter on the water changes. Like, do like a lesser water change. Um, let's see here. Do you have any plans? Do you have any plans to go back to Peru, Africa? I'd like to go to Asia. That would be where I want to go next. Uh, I go to Peru every couple of years. It's been too long. I haven't been. I'd like to go. But um, can you go carpet a dwarf, uh, dwarf pear grass with no CO2? You can try. You're going to need a lot of high light and really, really good nutrients. I believe you can, but uh, that's a tough one, though. That's a real tough one. And you got to think about this with carpeting plants, folks. Like carpeting plants, they come from like a really, really shallow water area. They come from like super shallow water. So you want to have like a really, really short, um, a really, really short tank with really, really good substrate. I mean, they're not injecting CO2 in the wild. That kind of, but it's another conversation. But yeah, I mean, really, really shallow water, high, 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 high light. You can do it. Uh, let's see here. What else? Reading from Toledo. What's up? I'm from Flag City. What's going on? Love it, man. Keep rocking out the video. Cool. Appreciate it. I'm having a hell of a time with my angels. Any suggestion? What's the problem, Jake? Appreciate it. Um, what's that tall plant in your tank to your right? Uh, that is a crenum in the tans. And not a Calmestrado. It's in the tans that I've had for years and years and years. Uh, what's my favorite place in the world, Dusty, you could catch fish from anytime you want? I'll tell you right now. Oh, Clarence, what's going on, man? Um, the, my favorite place in the world would be, uh, it would be Lake Erie. I would be on, at the wall with my dad before we started drinking. I'm just kidding. Love you, dad. And, uh, and I would be hanging out and I would be using night crawlers and I would have a fish hook here with the worm on it and a fish hook here with the worm on it. And I would be throwing it down and, uh, it would be like right off the bottom and I'd be catching yellow perch all the long. And I would just be eating, I would catch yellow perch. Probably throw them back if they're too small, and I'd catch carp, and I'd catch maybe not baby walleye, and that would be like my happy place. That's what it is a kid. That's part of the reason I'm so into it. Um, dwarf hair grass without CO2 grows very slow. Sorry to join the live feed so late. No problem. When are we announcing the bug bites? Uh, it's the end of the month. Everybody, the flu ball bug bites, the winter of the flu ball bug bites is at the end of the month. For the native Danish tank, minimal temps you suggest with plants of mine. I'm not good with the native Danish plants there. Any dwarf bulb plants, dwarf lilies for a two people tank? Yeah, I actually got those on sale, by the way. Um, you can get red tiger lotus. Oh, my God, I do that every week, dude. Live in Michigan. Yeah, oh, Michigan, yeah. Shout out to Lake Erie. I'm an Ohio Buckeyes fan, but yeah. Lake Erie's the bomb, dude, for sure. Just don't throw away. Yeah, I love it, man. The only problem with Lake Erie is the wintertime comes. Love your videos. Thanks for taking time, sharing your knowledge. Cool, you got it. You got it. Cool. Running out, of, running out of energy, folks. Running out of gas. Ugh. Cool. What else you got, folks? Go Bucks live stream. Oh, cool. You like it? Cool. I do. I do live streams. Uh, if you guys like this, if you sign up for my email list. I do webinars. Uh, mm -hmm. I do a private, so I don't have the trolls or whatever. I don't have to like manage as much, and I can have a PowerPoint. So I actually do these. Shameless plug. I do them every Thursday from my email list. Um, you'll get notified of specials, you get notified of webinars, uh, you get the What's Up Fish Tank People news, which comes out every Wednesday. It's coming out a day late because I'm doing this. But um, that's on my email, so that's all part of the Dustin package, if you will. And then um, I do webinars where I have a PowerPoint, so I can actually like give you a visual representation of what you're looking for. So if you guys enjoyed this, subscribe, like it, share it. Cool. Yeah, glad you guys dig it. Cool, great. Love you. Good to have you on here. Thanks, everybody, on here. Love the newsletter. Cool. Never mind the natives then. Minimum temperature just for easy plants, 60 degrees. Do more live streams. Y'all like the live stream? Cool. It's good. I enjoy doing the live stream. I feel like I'm never going to be able to talk again. But yeah. If y'all enjoyed this, can you guys hit the like button for my uh, my psyche so I can hit off here and be like, man, that many people liked it. It feels good. Uh, and then also the, uh, yeah. Love the live stream. When we do a live stream topic, I want you to drop me a comment on that too. That'd be helpful. Fastest growing low light plants that cover for, uh, oh, that's easy. They, that'd be water wisteria, dude. This plant right here, it's actually on sale on my website too. You can check it out. I do have the buy one, get one free going on my website. So only those 20 species in that category. You can check it out. This is wisteria. This would be the best for like breeding fish, angel fish, uh, plants that are fish that are hiding or whatever. Uh, what foreground plants do you have? I've got um, banana and I've got dwarf sage or whatever. Like that? I've worked that in for you. Hit the like and share button. You like this? How are we going to do 
How are we going to do the other tanks? Um, I don't know. I'm creatively stuck on the 20 long. Like, I, just, I don't know what to do with it. Like, I'm like, I like this, but I like that or whatever. So, uh, I'm not sure. So, thanks for hitting the like and share button. It does help me out. Let YouTube know that I'm doing stuff all right. So, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. You ever keep CPDs? No. But my buddy Mark Walcott kept CPDs. And the way he said CPDs was really special. I love him. I love him. He knows I'm joking him, but. Um, but he kept CPDs and so I, I do like CPDs. Celestial Pearl Daniels, I believe, is the correct name for those. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun. A couple more questions and I got to roll. Uh, hit the like. Every one of your videos. Cool. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate it. Um, what's the LS upload? Leave your suggestions in the comments. Next live stream should be about. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, wait for it to upload and uh, we'll do it. Loving the streams, mate. Keep it up. Cool. Email people when your next live stream might be. I miss a lot of them. Yeah, I can do that. Let's boost the live stream and live chat. It's cool. Love it. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, I know. It's fun. Yeah, support your boy. I got the special going on. Uh, it's cool. I was going to do this out in the greenhouse, but I decided to do it in here. It's a little more quiet. My wife has done a wonderful job keeping the kids at bay. So thanks, everybody, for the likes and the shares and the, and the comments and all that good stuff. It means a ton. So I'm going to split. And, uh, yeah, have, everyone have an awesome freaking day. So. Yeah, I'm out. Thanks, everybody. Got to go. Thank you, everybody. Tank on. Don't use pink gravel. Support your boy. Have a great night. I'm out. Later. Bye-bye. That puts. I don't even know how to end it. You know that? I'm not even good enough to do it. I don't know.